We are live now, I believe. I probably should have done this in vertical mode. I don't know. Anyways, hey everybody, it's Thursday. It's noon EST and I'm Cece from CC Restyled. And hey Rosie. And today we're gonna be playing with some transfers and I've got um, some colorful um, metallic waxes from Art Alchemy. Um, by Prima Marketing and see all these pretty little details here um, that I added. I, we're going to be putting the metallic waxes on these details and I'm going to be using a, a, a few different colors so it will create kind of like a iridescent or oil slick look is what I, I like to call it my oil slick look using about three different colors and you get a really neat uh, kind of iridescent glow on your details or whatever you choose to add it to so I'm going to scooch over here a little bit. Um, but first, we're going to start by layering some transfers on our pieces. So, um, I will just explain the transfers and how to cut and place and layer them. Because um, I actually see a lot of questions about that. Like, oh, you can layer transfers. Yes, you can. And, um, I mean, I see a lot of questions about them, period. So, uh, if you're a pro, you're probably going to already know. But I'm going to go ahead and explain it for those who are not pros. Maybe you're new to transfers, haven't tried one yet, or tried them, but you're still not totally comfortable. Hey, everyone, thanks for hopping on and uh, say hello. Um, I'll try to answer questions, um, but if I don't and I miss them, either Roz will get them or I'll, I'll come back and I'll answer later. But um, So uh, decor transfers from Redesign with Prima are a rub-on graphic, and they come in these fun tubes here in all different styles and colors. There are a lot of florals. And that's okay because they come in all different colors, types of flowers, and designs. And um, I can't get enough flowers. I don't know about you guys, but I can't get enough flower. I can't get enough florals. And the text. This is one of my favorite transfers. It's called Imperial Garden. Do you see all that fun text in the background? It's like different sizes and fonts, and um, you know, says different things. I've used that in so many different on so many different pieces in the backgrounds just to create texture, you know, cut it out and place it where I want. So transfers like this come in, I think this one comes in six sheets and you piece it together. You can piece it together to get this design. I don't, I don't know that I've ever actually used a transfer that way just because I always see them and I think something different in my head. So I cut and I place what I want out of the transfer and that's what we're gonna do today. So we are going to use Imperial Garden um, and I'm really, really sorry I'm going to do this to y'all, but I'm going to use Rose and Rouge too. It has been discontinued. You probably can't get it. But I really wanted to put some peachy coral colored flowers on this piece, so I'm going to use it. I'm sorry. Don't cry. Don't be mad at me. But um, this piece, actually, I, I built myself. So my skills are a little mediocre when it comes to woodworking, but uh, they are... They exist enough for me to build uh, this little coffee bar for my mom. She wanted a specific size and I couldn't find anything that size. So I was like, I'll just build it. I kind of jump at the chance to, to build anything I can. So, so I built this little guy, painted it in a ombre color scheme of this, this dark blue to um, the lighter blue, which is in the navy to antebellum blue in case you were wondering. But um, so I, I started with the blues and I want to add some, um, you know, magentas and more blues and that pretty uh, eggplanty purple color. Like, I just love how these, you know, colors go with the blues that I chose. And also, um, the Rose and the Rouge had, Rose and Rouge has a little bit of coral peachy flowers in it, which I think will, they go really well with the, um, the blues. They're, they're, orange and blue are complementary, so they'll look really good together. So what we need is our transfers, some scissors, maybe a knife or a blade and a transfer tool if you have one if you don't have one transfers come with these handy dandy little sticks okay so these work just fine um if you want you can buy one of these fancy schmancy transfer tools and they're pretty neat but they both work you know you're not going to have an issue using the one that comes with the stick and or with the transfer unless you break it then you might have a little bit of an issue it's happened um but i keep these I keep these because I use them to stir paint up, like my sparkly paints, my metallic paints, and you want to stir them before you use them. I stir up paint, I stir epoxy, anything I want to just stir and throw away, I use these guys. 
Also, when you're making molds for your resin or, or resin molds, uh, I like to take them and scrape them along the back of my resin mold if I overfill it and it just gets all that resin off of there or, you know, extra resin off of there. It gets it nice and smooth and you just pitch this. So it's awesome. Keep these because um, you eat waste not want not, right? Uh, let's go ahead and start with our Imperial Garden Transfer. Some of these flowers are going to be a little bit big, but that's okay. We're going to cut them out, place them, customize them how we want. And uh, I, I should know that when you're applying a transfer, um, I'm applying it to dried paint. I painted this yesterday. It's dried. Um, it's suggested to let it dry overnight. I kind of apply transfers once it's dry to the touch and I've never had an issue. But if you wanna be safe, let it dry overnight. But my point is you wanna apply your transfers to the paint. If you've already top coated something and it's dry and you're like, oh, I wanna add a transfer, that's okay. You can apply a transfer to cured, cop, cured top coat, um, water-based top coat or oil-based top coat. Doesn't matter if it's cured, you can add a transfer to it. You know, clear wax, it can be cured, but that you need to wait at least 30 days. So if you've waxed, it, waxed a piece with clear wax or any kind of wax, black wax, yellow wax, blue wax, or whatever, you wanna wait at least 30 days before you apply a transfer because wax takes longer to, to cure. And um, yeah, stain, you can put transfers on stain, just needs to be cured. You can transfer on a mirror, enamel, plastic, leather, fabric, wood. So anyways, those are some common questions that I see. So this is the text I was showing you on the back of the um, tube that I love, love, love. Like I wish I could get like all the sheets in the world of this because I love adding these, um, this text to my designs, it just creates really in, in interesting designs and lots of texture in the background, um, kind of subtle. On this piece, I'm not gonna be using the text. It's a little dark and it'll probably get lost. Um, the, gold, the gold that I used on that piece behind me was Eternal Decor Wax, so um, <laughs> thanks for asking. Yes, it's Decor Wax and Eternal from Redesign with Prima. Uh, can I see on the leg? Yes. Well, let, uh, let me, okay. I'm going to show Ramsey real quick the leg of my other piece of furniture. I think that's what she's asking real quick. Sorry, guys. Is that what you want to see? The foot, the leg? I don't know. Ah! I Sorry, I have like this. There we go. Is that, I don't know. Is that what you, I think that's what you're asking. Anyways, okay. Back on track. <laughs> We're back on track. Um, so, now I've lost my train of thought. Okay, so I'm not going to use the text on this. I'm going to go ahead and start with um, the big chunks of flowers, and I'm going to cut around. I want to cut out what I can of that background texture or text or whatever. I don't need to get all of it, but if there's any text, chances are the way I'm placing this is going to go on the wrong way, so I don't want my text to read the wrong way. So another reason why I'm axing the text. So... Let's see, let's go ahead and start on the top since that's the kind of view that we're in right now. Um, let's see. Ooh, I like these. These, they, they go with the blues pretty well, huh? Got a nice little pink guy up there. I like in those. I don't know if I wanna use that on the top. Maybe we'll see what, let's see what else we've got here for options. Okay, so we've got this little chunk here. I kind of like that on the blue. That might look nice on the blue. Um, this one is mostly text, but I do like this little corner up here because the blues and the greens will look good with my blue, so maybe patch that in somewhere. And then this one, a lot of text. Let's go ahead and start with the two that we picked out. Um, so basically, I want to kind of pick my bigger chunk of flowers for now and I think I want to cut out okay so bear with me here while I try to explain this okay so see how you got the hard edges here because you're supposed to really line it up with other pieces we're gonna have to 
figure out how to create a more organic edge to um, the chunk that we that we cut out. Does that make sense? So if I just cut it and placed it with these hard edges and put it on my piece, I would have hard edges and it would look like I cut it out and smacked it on there. I don't want that. I want it to look thoughtfully placed. So we're gonna just figure out where we want it first. And I'm thinking if we do it kind of like this, can you see that? If we do it like this, Hold on, let me raise you up. We're gonna raise the roof. There we go. There we go. Okay, so now can you see that? Oh gosh, nope, nope. There we go. Woo! Woo woo. Alright, so I'm thinking if we kind of put it on like this, we can cut uh, around this pink flower here and kind of maybe around here and then maybe here, and then we'll have this chunk of florals, and then with this other piece, I can cut out this little guy, or this little guy, or this little guy, and I can just kind of patch them in, or maybe I'll do my rose, rose and rouge and patch that in. I don't know, we'll see how it looks. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my scissors. <coughs> scissors, and Sorry, I talk this much, my throat gets so dry. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and cut. I think I wanna keep this pink little flower here, maybe. Wait, can you see that? Or is it? I know my lights kind of make my focus. There, see that little pink guy? I think I wanna keep him. So we're just gonna go ahead and start cutting around. You can take your time and make perfect cuts if you want. I find that if a little bit of the background texture is on there, it's okay, it's all right. So um, you don't have, you know, I don't sit there and try to cut perfectly every time. It just kind of depends on what's in the background. So now we have to make a decision, okay? We have to make a decision what we want of these leaves on here. I think I'm just gonna keep this big green leaf and then kind of cut around that. We might lose that little purple guy. I'm okay with the purple guy being out of here. So you want to keep your cuts kind of organic, you know, organically shaped. You don't want hard, hard edges, harsh lines, that all that jazz. Because then it, you know, in my personal opinion, which obviously is just my opinion, the harsh lines don't look so good unless you know it's on the edge of a piece or in a corner. I'm I'm not into the whole harsh line with no end. You know, like I don't know, maybe it's my OCD or something. I don't know. Who knows? All right, so see how instead of cutting that harsh line right there, I'm just kind of following the petals on this purple or pink flower. Just following the petals, and we're going to give it a, a little bit more organic of an ending rather than that straight line. So you can kind of fudge it a little bit. We're probably going to patch in some other flowers to cover that up anyway. So um, I also am going to go ahead and cut off my little extra here, my little clear extra because I'm gonna be butting this up against the corner of my piece right here. So I don't want that little clear extra line because it's just gonna get in my way. All right, I can leave this one on though because it's gonna be this edge. So I don't need to cut that extra off, it's fine. Does that make sense? Yeah, I hope so. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and peel my backing paper fairly slowly off, okay, to make sure that my transfer is sticking to my front, you know, my acetate sheet, which is the clear sheet. You want it to be sticking to the acetate, not the backing paper. If it's sticking to the backing paper, roll it up, stick it back on, roll it up, and then I uh, would like to start from the other side. So if this was sticking to the backing paper like is, I would put this back down, and then I would start rolling from the other side. If um, it's still sticking, I pop them in the freezer for like five minutes and that has always worked for me. So if, unless it's a defect in the transfer, it will work. And I will tell you, every once in a while, there is some transfers. In, in the hundreds of transfers I've used, I've had about five 
max that have had like little pea-sized areas that will not transfer. They stick to the backing paper no matter what I do. Um, that's a very small percentage, you know. It happens. Nobody and nothing is perfect. If that happens, you know, just contact your retailer or um, customer service. So um, it doesn't happen often, though. At least I can say that. Okay, so we're going to just kind of lay this where we think we want it to end up living. Line it up down. I'm going to line it up down here on this edge. And then I'm going to line up, make sure this edge is lined up to my little crease here, or goes right into my crease. And that's where I want it. So now that I know I want it there for show, I'm going to go ahead and just rub it, make sure it's in place, you know, with my palm, no biggie. And then I'm going to grab my fancy schmancy transfer tool. And now I'm just going to go ahead and just rub it. So you have this big end for larger portions of transfer like this. And you have a smaller end. I kind of like to use a smaller end a little bit uh, better um, usually, but the big end has these cool hooks on it. So I like the hooks. You can go in grooves on drawers or anywhere in details um, over edges like this to get the edge of that, that little clear edge to stick and kind of roll over the front just a little bit. So that's perfect for that. But now I'm going to go ahead and just start rubbing on my transfer. I usually start from the middle and work my way out. Doesn't, you know, if, you can also start from one end and work your way to the other end. It, it doesn't really matter. It just kind of depends on what your layout looks like, really, in my opinion. All right, so we're just going to rub it on. Ah! And like I said, um, ah, really. Ow. If you um, don't have one of these tools, don't fret. You can use the little kind of popsicle stick jobby that comes with the transfers. No big deal. They work just fine. But you want to make sure you rub all over your transfer the best you can. Make sure it's down. Snug as a bug in a rug. Get in the corners. Use a little elbow grease, okay? On days that uh, you apply transfers, you have my permission to skip your workout. Just saying. That's why I try to apply a transfer, a transfer a day, okay? A transfer a day keeps the gym away. Okay, so once I've got it uh, pretty confident that I've rubbed over the entire thing, I'm gonna pick one end and I'm just gonna slowly pull my backing paper up just watching the transfer to make sure there's no parts that are not sticking and if you see any parts not sticking just put your paper back down and rub that spot and then just keep on a going <coughs> okie dokie so far so good smooth move now these corners you want to make sure you got it down in the corners really well because tends to when when you're pulling them up like this they can if they're not stuck they can tend to curl up and stick to themselves and then eh. so make sure your corners are down real well or your crevices i mean there we go there we go boom baby now that my transfer is applied i'm going to take my palm or my finger so it depends on you know your piece really or your size the size of the transfer you're putting down i'm going to take my palm and I'm going to go ahead and go over it, um, pop any bubbles or smooth out any wrinkles, okay? You want to make sure you do that because we're going to have to seal this transfer. You do need to seal transfers, okay? If you don't, um, I've had pieces of like artwork that I did as demos and I never sealed them just because they were demos and I didn't really need them again. And I've noticed after a few weeks, they start to dry and crack and peel up. So if you want whatever you're transferring to last, you're going to need to seal it. You can use any water-based top coat or clear wax to seal. Please don't use anything oil-based. It will um, Transfers do not like oil-based products because oil will render your, the adhesive useless on your transfer and it will, it will fail. So there's that. 
All right, so I wanna put a little tiny bit more flower in this corner, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna take some parts of my Rosen Rouge and just kind of dot them in here where, can you see where that background part, the background parts that I did not cut out? Um, can you see that just a little bit in the background? I'm gonna cover those spots with my Rosen Rouge transfer because um, I wanna add in a few more colors. So in, in addition to adding in a, some more color, I'm also customizing my piece by using various transfers and um, it's just really customize, you know, customizes your piece when you use a variety and layer them because chances are of two pieces ever being exactly alike are slim. So, I, you know, I've had people message me and say, well, you know, everybody uses the same transfers. How do you, you know, feel original? I'm like, well, every time I use the transfers, I use them custom, okay? I cut them and I place them how I want. Nobody, you know, nobody has done that exact same placement before. So it is custom. It's not hand painted, but it's custom. Um, I mean, honestly, I could hand paint flowers, but I don't wanna spend a month on this piece. I wanna get it done and get it to its home. All right, so I think I would like to use this little corner here, oh, sorry, this little corner here, right here in this corner. And then this little guy also. So we're gonna go ahead and cut those two out. <clears throat> place those. We'll place our rose and rouge and then we'll go ahead and move on to our gilding waxes. They're metallic waxes, my favorite. They're amazing and they smell so, so good. Um, we're gonna do those here on the back in a um, oil slick ombre rainbowy kind of deal. Um, I am gonna put more flowers all over the other parts strategically of this piece, but um, you get the gist now, right? You got the meat and the potatoes of transfer application. All right, so I'm just cutting out this little guy here. Okay, and since I'm putting them in the corner, I'm gonna cut off my little clear edges because they got nowhere to go. I don't want them to show. Okay, so peel away my backing paper slowly. Woo. All right, so we're good there. So now you, want, you don't want to touch the back of your transfer as much as possible <coughs> because that's where the adhesive is. And if you touch it too much, it'll stick to your fingers. And you don't want it on your fingers. You want it on your furniture. All right, we're gonna go ahead and place that gently in the back corner. And that's where we want it. Good, good. Kind of rub that in place. Now I'm gonna cut out my little, I love this flower right here, so I wanna use him. So we're gonna cut out this little kind of blush, peachy color guy. And always save your scraps, okay? I'm not throwing that away. I'm using that on another project. Save your scraps for several reasons. If you make a boo-boo and you need to band-aid it, you can use scrap transfers to band-aid band -aid your boo-boos. Um, you know, so say you're scraping away and you accidentally scrape away too much transfer or, you know, something sticks to it or something like that and rips it up or whatever, any of the variety of things that can go wrong with transfers. Um, you can hide it with a little scrap piece of band-aid or <laughs> transfer. I like to call them band-aids because essentially that's what you're doing. Okay, so we're gonna rub this puppy on. Make sure he's good and on there. Yeet. And you might be asking yourself, well, you know, those, those little lines around the edge of the transfer, the clear lines, um, the halo we call them, or ghosting, um, when I seal this piece, that will start to disappear. So I obviously haven't sealed it yet, but um, I'm gonna use some clear coat and a satin finish and that will <coughs> diminish my, my little halo lines, okay? So no worries, mom. All right, let's try to pick up, I'm trying to pick up an edge here. It's kind of hard with these big fat nails. All right. Peeling, we're peeling, we're peeling, we're peeling. 
Boom. All right, there we go. So now I want to burnish my transfer really well with my finger, my palm, a uh, soft cloth, whatever. You just want to make sure you pop any bubbles, smooth out any wrinkles um, to make sure your transfer is adhere, adhered very well and is going to last after you clear coat it. Oops. All right, so now I'm gonna take this last little flower and I just wanna put it right here um, before we move on to uh, throw in, I'm just gonna throw in a couple little flowers from Rose and Rouge. I don't wanna tease you guys too much with Rose and Rouge because chances are you can't find it anywhere anymore and I hate to do that to you guys. Don't wanna be a tease, but you can find Imperial Garden all day long and it's just as beautiful. We always want what we can't have, right? It seems like every time there's a transfer that goes out of stock or discontinued or a stencil or anything it's like all of a sudden everyone is in a panic to get that one that's why i stock up before they go out of stock or discontinue i stock up i buy them all, all right, there's our last little guy from imperial garden on the top and like i said on the other sides of this piece i'm just going to do the, a similar type thing but maybe a little bit less this is probably the majority of my flowers on the other sides of the piece and inside. I'm just gonna do little bits here and there um, to kind of marry the whole thing together, but I'm not gonna get too carried away, this one, okay? Um, okay, so, ouch. I don't know, is there any? Yes, transfer right onto the paint. Um, I mentioned that earlier in the video. I'm sure if you're just hopping on, you, you didn't catch that, but transfer right onto the paint, let it dry preferably overnight um tbh sometimes i just wait until it's dried to the touch i haven't had a problem so far but you should wait overnight but i'm impatient so <coughs> okay so if you do have a piece that's been sealed already as long as that sealer is completely cured and uh, you know say something it's paint you've painted in the past or you just kind of decided you wanted to add a transfer to it at the last minute it's okay you can apply it on the sealer just make sure it's completely sealed or i mean cured or it will it won't stick won't stick to wet sealer i mean i feel like part of that might be a little kind of obvious but rose and rouge okay i'm really sorry again to do this to you and taunt you like this but i want to add some rose and rouge to this little guy i'll make it quick um who knows maybe you'll get lucky and find a retailer that still has one so i'm gonna grab i like this little purple guy here he's one of my favorites if you look at all the different transfers you will see this little guy hidden in lots of different transfers different sizes but always this guy and i he's one of my favorites very versatile and then I think I want, I want something kind of pinkish. There, here. How about we cut, okay, I'm gonna do something crazy here. Don't cry. I want this little chunk right here, but I don't want the whole flower. So I just want to add, I just want to add a little bit of him to right here. So I'm actually just gonna cut right through this flower, okay? and oh my goodness is that heartbreaking does that does that hurt when i cut right through the center of the flower i feel like because nobody wants to waste transfers right but guess what i'm not going to waste that i'm going to use this on another side of my piece here that we're working on so it's okay it really is all right so that's going to go right there so now i'm just going to go ahead and finish cutting out oh we'll keep that little guy there i'm going to go ahead and finish cutting out this little chunk i'm going to use I'm gonna apply this and then we'll get, get to getting on to the metallic waxes. All right, so those are our two chunks we're using. All right, I'm putting it away. I'm putting away Rose and Rouge. I'm very sorry. This is probably like remnants of like two or three different transfers that I'm rolling all up into one tube yeah all right ah. all right we'll get that later okay so stick 
See, stick. Save those bad boys. They make good paint stirs, okay? Poxy stirs, whatever. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna get rid of my scissors. We're gonna go ahead and add this guy right here. Okay, so this is how you layer a transfer. You do the exact same thing as when we applied it the first go round. Lay kind of roughly where we want it. Once we can commit to a location, secure the location. Let's see, where do we want to put this guy? I'm thinking maybe like kind of stick him out here maybe on his own or um, hmm, maybe there. Oh, I like there. I like kind of there. That good? Boom. Sometimes I like to have just a little linger like that kind of out there not hanging with the pack, you know what I'm saying? Just a little loner guy. I like that. But you can't have too many little loner guys and it just looks like sporadic, like you weren't thinking about your placement. Just a little tip from me to you. Okay, I'm gonna get my edge, or I can use my little handy dandy hook jobby on the end and go over my edge. But regardless, I'm gonna go ahead and Go over my whole transfer here. See, it's no different than apl applying a transfer directly to the paint. We're just layering them for a, a more custom look. Our own look. I've put as many as six or seven transfers on one piece before. Just little sections, not the whole transfer. So you can get really crazy with it if you want. Come up with some really cool things. Okay, let's see. We good, we good, we good. So we're going to peel back slowly, make sure our transfer is sticking, okay? So that's why we want to go slowly. You don't want to just rip the sucker off like a band-aid and you rip your transfer. Okie dokie, we're good. Okay, so now I'm going to press down. See, I got a little bubble right there. I'm just going to take my thumb and pop those bubbles. <coughs> Okay, you wanna make sure you go around the edges, smooth out the wrinkles, pop the bubbles. Those are no good. Okay, I think we're good there. Nice and smooth. No bubbles, no wrinkles. All right, let's get this little last guy on and then we'll move on to metallic waxes. What, what? Okay, okay. Go ahead and peel this sucker up. Got my backing paper here. All right, boom, boom. Mm. Okay, do you remember how I told you out of the hundreds of transfers that I've done, I've had maybe five that had a little defect? See this? little tiny dot right there that's sticking to the backing paper that would not rub off it's like it didn't get adhesive when it was being uh, produced it would not rub off no matter what I did so I have this little tiny dot right here on my pedal that's missing a little piece see if you can see that here you probably can't even see it to be honest with you it's so small it's right there little tiny dot missing you probably can't really see it um, I'm not going to do anything to patch that up because it's so tiny. However, if your little chunk is bigger than my little chunk here and it's bothering you and you want to correct it or, um, you know, whatever, without having to start over and get a new transfer and all that jazz, um, take one of your little scrap pieces and cut out a little petal or a small chunk that kind of fits in with the design right there or a little leaf or, you know, something you know, another little element, or butterfly, whatever. Um, and you can just apply that right over it to patch that in, and it'll be just like it never happened, promise. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and move on and do some real quick metallic waxes, because metallic waxes are the bomb. Let's see. Um, and now, that, I guess that means now I have to decide which colors I wanna use. Let me show them to you real quick first, and then I'll decide which colors I want to use. So the metallic waxes are 
They're from a line called um, Art Alchemy by um, Finnebear, which is just a, another line in pre, uh, from Prima Marketing, similar to like Redesign is, is a, its own line. Um, and these are water-based waxes, okay? They come in these little tins and they smell so good, like it's literally tempting to wear them as perfume because they smell so good. And they're so sparkly. And they're, these are water-based, okay? This one I haven't, I don't think I've used it much, so it's got a little bit of liquid on top. But that's okay because we'll just kind of stir it in a little bit with our brush if we use that one. I don't know. That one was rose gold. Um, I've got old denim, which I'm thinking might work really good on this um, blue piece. I don't know. It may be too bright. Too bright. Too bright, I think. But, oh, it smells like vanilla and sugar or something. This blue, however, peacock, may work. I'm thinking we might throw a little bit of peacock on there. So we're going for like an iridescent kind of oil slick look. So I'm going to grab the peacock. And I, when I'm doing multiple colored waxes on my details, I usually like to stick to about three colors. Two is not enough, I don't think, and four is too many. Three is perfect. I've also got, uh, this one is called Fire Ruby. It's like a ruby red metallic. Um, I mean, they, there's so many colors, you guys. I'm not gonna stay here and show you all of them. I'm just trying to figure out which ones I'm gonna use. Would a transfer stick over a small bit of metallic wax since it's water-based? Yes, it will also stick over oil-based wax as long as it's 100% cured. So if you're trying to apply transfer over oil-based gilding waxes, I would wait at least 24 to 48 hours, depending on how thick you, you've applied your wax. Um, Water-based, just, you know, when it, whenever it's dry to the touch, maybe a couple hours. What about that one? Is that too bright? That's too bright, but it still smells good. Okay, I gotta figure this out. Time is a ticking. All right, vintage gold. I'm thinking I'm definitely gonna do some vintage gold. Okay, so peacock, vintage gold, and I need one other color. <laughs> you can't tell I like the vintage gold, can you? I think it's time for a new vintage gold. Oh, how about mint sparkle? Mint sparkle, blue, green, and gold. I'm thinking, yes. Um, yeah, you can wax on a transfer. Uh, so, it, again, um, this you need to seal the transfer. So I would seal it first. You can use these directly on the transfer, but you're still gonna have to wait for them to dry and seal it. So I would seal it and then use the waxes. Um, I mean, but technically, the water-based waxes you could use directly on a, on a transfer. I wouldn't put the oil-based oil -based waxes directly on a transfer though. Would not do that. All right, boom, we got our colors all picked. <coughs> <coughs> sometimes I apply my wax with my finger. Um, sometimes I use a brush. It just kind of depends on the details. Like if they're big details like this, I usually use a finger. If they, or flat, flattish kind of details like this trim, I can just lightly go over it with my finger and that works really well. Um, but since I'm using three different colors today, I'm gonna use brushes so that my finger doesn't get all like muddied up. Um, when I'm choosing brushes to use with gilding wax, I like stiffer brushes, okay? Not super stiff, but not real soft like a makeup brush. I don't, I don't prefer to use a makeup brush for my waxes. I like something semi-stiff. Um, let's see, I don't know, and, and like flat, okay? Flat, semi-stiff, that's just what I prefer. You can, you can use whatever you think works best for you. So, I got my three colors. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and open them all. And I'm gonna work in the same order with my colors all the way across my piece. So what I'm gonna do, you can go a gradient from top to bottom, you can go side to side. I'm gonna go at an angle with my colors because I, I think that looks more oil slick, natural, kind of prism, prismatic looking. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with, I usually like to do them in rainbow order. So green, we'll just call the gold yellow. So Rory G. Biv, 
We're going to do gold, green, and blue. Um, I try to keep colors, colors that are going to be next to each other, I try to keep them, um, what's the word, blendable, I guess, ones that will blend well together. So for example, if you're using red and green wax on, um, the, on your details, you're going to have some brown spots because red and green mixed together makes brown, if that makes sense. So that's why I go in rainbow order. Um, so yeah, it does matter what colors you're using and what order you're using them in. So if you don't know, grab yourself a color wheel or pull one up, one up off Google. If the colors are opposite of each other on the color wheel, they're not going to blend well. They're going to be brown. I mean, it's, you can do it, but you can also screw it up pretty easily. Just FYI. We're going to start with a brush. Who knows? I may stick with my finger. So it's kind of like we're applying some makeup here. Okay, we're just going to like get a little bit on our, the end of our brush. And I'm going to go ahead and, let me see. I'm going to scooch you in. There you go. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to work down into like a diagonal, like I said. So lightly, okay, you don't want to like, I mean, I guess you can paint it on if you want the whole molding to be, you know, whatever color. But I like to kind of start with just lightly brushing it, you know, like you would some eyeshadow or, um, mess or you know, blush. Sorry if there's any guys watching. I, I would doubt there's too many, but... Um, you won't understand my, my how I'm relating this to makeup, would ya? So we're just lightly kind of going over the tops of our details. Now sometimes I want my details to be very gold or metallic and prominent. So I will literally like take my wax and like paint it on there. You know, all coverage and get down in the details, but not very often. Usually when I'm using my gilding wax, I like to just kind of lightly touch the tops what it does is it highlights the details, um, the tops of those details, and really brings them out. So I'm just going to kind of lightly give this guy a little kiss of gold over here. Because remember, we're working in a diagonal, so I'm working this way down. At least that's my goal for now. Sometimes things turn out different, as you all know, I'm sure. They turn out different than we think. But... Having a vision helps. Okay. All right, so we just lightly got that on there. Okay, so next is our mint sparkle. Mmm, pretty, huh? <coughs> so I'm going to get a little bit of that on my brush, just like we did the last color. And I'm going to try to get the excess off here. All right. And then I'm going to overlap my gold just a little bit. Okay. Um, just a little bit because I want them to blend together. I don't really want there to be a harsh line between the gold and the green. So I'm going to kind of overlap them a little bit. And if they don't blend together from me just doing this, then I'll just take my finger and I'll blend them together a little bit. It's kind of hard to see when I'm at the weird angle. Here we go. Okay. I'm trying not to get in front of the camera, but it's making this a weird angle for me. Let me turn it like this. Can you see it like that? Yeah, you can see it like that. That's a little better. All right, so. Got a green, mint sparkle. We're just grazing the tops of our details lightly okay and I'm gonna get a little bit more and come down here overlap our gold just a little bit see how it's kind of blending together with the green if you want it to blend a little more just take your finger and rub where the colors meet and that will blend the colors together so there's not a harsh line in between the colors okay we don't want color stripes we want a nice little ombre iridescent blend Okay, so here we go, down here, and um, since I am trying to work at a diagonal with my colors, I don't know how well that's going to go, but I'm trying. So we're going to go ahead and go down here, because our line, see, see that line that I'm creating with my brush, that diagonal line, that's where I want each color to kind of fall.
This is my favorite part of any project, you guys, is putting the gilding wax on. It's so therapeutic to me. I mean, not so much when it's on a live, but when I'm by myself and I'm just doing this process, it brings me joy. All right, here we go. Next, we're finishing up our gold, or our mint sparkle. Mint sparkle. Now we get to move on to peacock. Peacock. Okay, we're just getting a little bit of peacock on our brush. A little bit of peacock on our brush, wipe off the excess. And the only reason I'm using different size brushes is because I didn't have three of the same size brush handy. I just grabbed these because I like these and they're flat. I didn't, they're not different sizes on purpose. You can use all the same size brush. All right, so we're gonna overlap our mint sparkle with our peacock just a little bit. Okay, so it can, see how it kind of blends in with the mint sparkle, creating that ombre fade that we all love, the well that most of us love. Okay, and then we're gonna come down here, overlap our green just a little bit. We don't wanna eat up the green, we just wanna overlap it a tiny bit so it blends. And if you do use your finger instead of a brush, be careful about touching the rest of your piece because I can't tell you how many times I have gotten smudges on my paint and places I don't want it because I was not paying attention and I had gilding wax all over my hand and I touched it. That's no fun. Should that happen to you though, grab some clear wax and go over it with a little brush. Uh, it works kind of as an eraser for your gilding wax, I guess is the best way to put it. All right, I am digging. I'm glad we chose these colors. They are perfect oil slick colors, you guys. Okay. Peacock is beautiful. These are, I love these waxes. Oh my gosh, you guys, they're so fun. They're so fun. You can get these from many redesigned retailers, but not all of them carry them. So if you're not if you're a retailer or you don't have a retailer, if they don't carry them, you can always find them on Etsy. Okay, just a little bit more of the, of the peacock here. Um, and then, now that I have all three colors, guess what? Guess what happens now? Now we go back to gold. And I wanna work in the same order all the way across. Um, I think it looks more natural that way. I mean, personally, in my humble opinion, it is more natural looking to stay in rainbow order. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Next little round here, starting with the gold, and then I'll hop off here, cause, cause I think you kind of get the idea now. But I'm overlapping the peacock just a little bit with my vintage gold. And I see how I'm not like purposely digging down in there to get into the details. I'm not digging my brush down in there like I'm painting it um, because I am trying to, you know, just get the, the tops of the details for highlights, okay? That doesn't mean that you can't paint your moldings or whatever in gilding wax. You can totally do that. Hardware, all that, you can gild anything. But I, for this purpose, I like to just kind of kiss the tops. Just a little touch. Okay, so, and I'm sure that by now you can figure out what's coming after the gold, right? It would be mint sparkle again, and then peacock, then gold, then green, then blue, you know what I'm saying? Like, Rainbow order, so I'm not gonna harp on that and keep keep you on here. But anyways, um, so that is my oil slick rainbow iridescent gilding wax. Is that pretty? I love doing that. It's so fun, and it gives such a cool, pretty look. Um, so I'll show you a little bit closer, and then I'll hop off. 
Pretty? Fun, right? Fun, and it, they come in all the colors. They come in all the colors, pink, purple. You saw the blue and the green. Ooh. So, um, let's see. Oh, yes. I mean, yeah, I'm pretty heavy-handed too, usually, um, with everything. So that's why I want. That's why I like long-handled brushes. So there's a little tip: if you're heavy-handed with wax or paint, the long-handled artist brushes. Okay, if you hold, if you hold it close to the bristles, you're going to be heavy-handed. If you're naturally heavy-handed, if you hold it far away from the bristles and you just go like this lightly, that's how I deal with my heavy hand because that's naturally I I just overdo everything. So um, if you hold it back and just lightly brush that really helps not get too much, you know, excess on there. And anyways, so, um, I hope that you all have a great upcoming weekend and enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Um, yeah. So we'll see you later redesigners. Bye.